Today, I'm gonna to show you how to sat hunt the easy way. And you don't have to download Bitcoin Core, you don't have to download Odd Wallet. You can actually get this set up within a few minutes and get hunting for those rare sats. At the end, we're also gonna go through how to extract those sats, uh, specific ones that you find using Sparrow Wallet. So first thing you wanna do is download Sparrow Wallet. There is instructions about how to set it up so it receives ordinals on docs.ordinal.com. So make sure you follow those steps there. You can still use Hero and Xverse to look and see what sats you have in your wallet and if anything's rare. Um, but when it comes to extracting, a Sparrow is definitely, a Sparrow or Ord, uh, Ord wallet, I, I would recommend using. Um, Sparrow is very easy as well. So we're going to go through that demonstration today. Um, but what we'll look at is in Sparrow under UTXOs, you can actually see the output. So this will take you straight to the UTXO. But let's imagine you're using Hero. Uh, you might just have a transaction ID. And so whenever you send your sats around, whenever you send Bitcoin around, you always have a, a transaction ID. So we're gonna pretend like you're in Hero for this one here. And we'll see this is my transaction ID. And we're gonna go across to ordinals.com and just paste in that transaction ID. Now the one input that might be a something that's sent from an exchange like Binance, Coinbase, whatever. And you see these are all the values that were inside of this transaction. So if I go back to Sparrow and you imagine you're on Hero, you copy your address and we're gonna see if we can find it. So I can see there's a transaction with 4.6 million sats, which is what I've got. And I can click on that there and it takes me to my sat range. Now the thing is with Sparrow, it actually removes one of those steps there. So if we go back to Sparrow, right click, copy transaction output, this is your UTXO. And if we just go back to ordinals.com, you paste that in, that will take you straight to that sat range there. So we can see that there's 11 sat ranges. Now the thing that when we think about sat ranges is it's actually a combination of different ranges of sats that add up to this total value here. So it's like when you go to a shops and you're getting change, they're not always going to give you the same amount of change. Now, this range here, I could have had just one sat range that added to the value, or that was to the value of 4.6 million. But these are all kind of divided up. So if we go to the first one, it's 1.6 million. The second one, uh, we're looking at 210,000. And so if you go through and add all of these up, 914 sats, so that's quite small, it will get to this value here. So if you had a, a sat inside this range here, it might be quite easy to find because what you would do is just go a, a up in numbers until you get to the one you want. But today I'm gonna to pretend that there is a sat in this range here that I wanna to get to. So you can't just tell it, hey, I want the fourth range along. What you have to do is look through all these values here and figure out how many sats are in this range, how many sats in this range, how many sats in this range, how many sats from this number here until my target number. So what I've gone and done is actually created this spreadsheet here. And what you can see is the start sat and the end sat. And that's exactly the same as what we have here. So start, start sat and the end sat, tongue twister. And what we can see is there's, and you could just copy paste these values as well. So 1.6 ending in 898, we'll make sure, ending in 898, and the same goes through there. But the fourth range, as I said there, we had a target and I just picked a random sat that we've got in this target here. So in the fourth one, let's go back. One, two, three, four. So you imagine your rare sat is in here or a sat that you're wanting to target is in here. It might be a birthday. It might be a certain word. Um, all these have names as well. And so the sat that I'm targeting is just a random one today that's in this range here. But you imagine that one had value to you. So we know that right now, in 1.8 million sats, so it's down this list here, it's 1.8 million sats until we get to the one that I wanna take out. So actually it's, it, that is the sat index, that, that number there. Because the thing to bear in mind is that uh, sats are zeroed from, uh, in ordinal theory, it's, it's indexed at zero. So this is actually number zero in this range, whereas that one there is one, one less of that. Uh, so yeah, starting at zero, uh, so if you're doing the maths here, it won't actually uh, show you the one less. But this actually doesn't it doesn't matter because we know that the sat I want is indexed uh, one after this number essentially. So if I'm if I'm to remove all the sats, including this one here, this target sat should actually be next in line. So I'm gonna I'm gonna prove that now as well. If we go back to Sparrow, 
So now we know how many stats we have to go through until we get to the one that I want to extract. We go back and we send selected. So I know my rare sat is in this, or well, the sat I'm targeting is in this range here. Send selected. Now, the first range you want to do is actually this range here. So you go back to Sparrow. And so I know the next one in line, because of the way they're indexed, uh, it will actually be the one that I want to target. So we're going to go ahead and give these labels of, um, you know, one, two, and three. And I'll explain why there's one, two, and three in a second. I don't need to put this in a wallet anywhere safe. I just want to send it back to the exchange so I can return it again and try to see if I've got any sets or anything else. Now, number two, that's going to be the one that has that sat that we're targeting. So we want to store that in a wallet. I'm going to put it back in my Sparrow wallet and I'm going to put it under a, another address and I'm going to label that address rare and we're going to freeze that UTXO once we're done. So I'm just going to copy that address. Copy that address, go back to here, pay to here. And so you can actually have uh, this value quite low, but I'm just going to put 10,000 um, there to make sure I've got enough, a few stats around it. And then you want to add one more transaction and we're going to pay this one back to the exchange. And we're just going to max because that's the remaining there. So make sure we number that three as well. So what you'll see here is there's 1.8 million sats and then the next one after, so it's a first in first out model, uh, it goes to 10,000, which then is the next one in line for the first one and this one here should be the sat that we're targeting. Now, as I said, it's indexed at zero. So you notice how we haven't minus one off the end of there. So it's still 7353, 753, which means the next one in line, the one that we're targeting should be the sat is here at the start of this one here. And then the rest, just whatever's left over, we don't care about it. We'll just send that back to the exchange as well. All right. The other thing to bear in mind is I have seen, and it did it here in this one, it does reorganize these here. So you need to go back create transaction again until you get to one, two, three, and this might take a few goes. Because it does randomize uh, that number there. All right, so that took me uh, a few clicks. We now have it in the order I want, so make sure you confirm. Yep, we wanna bump those out. Should be the start of my rest out there. And then last of all, which is just the rest that's remaining that UTXO. All right, so now we just need to copy the password. This is on a test account I've created. And let's broadcast that transaction. One thing you will notice, and um, we have a transaction ID, but you won't be able to actually see, and I'll show you here as well. So if we go to ordinals.com and paste in that transaction ID. And so as I was talking about, there's three outputs, first one, second one, third one. This one should have a rare sat. And you notice how there's no sat range here. Now that's either, either because it hasn't been confirmed yet or because the UTXO has already been spent. So if you're looking at uh, outputs and you don't actually see a sat range, it's potentially because that output uh, has already been spent. So we'll just wait for the confirmation. Um, I'll come back in a couple of minutes. And all going well, we should see this sat number ending in 316 at the very start of this range here. So we'll give that a couple of minutes and we'll see what it says. So we've just got one confirmation. Uh, remember our number start ended in, started in 316. And there you can see 316 is at the start of that range. So just going back, 17316 and then 17316. So like I said before, and just reiterate that point, this is the amount of uh, uh, sats that are in this total range that we're all searching for through before. But because the first one is indexed at zero, this one here, sorry, the, the target one there is actually the next one in line because it starts at zero, not one. So hopefully that makes sense, but that's the reason why we took away this much and then we're left with the next one being this here. So we'll just go back there so you can see that it starts at 316. And we've done taking 10,000, so of course uh, it's just 10,000 further from there, so you can see that value is 10,000. <clears> if we look at the actual transaction itself, let me just add that in. So you'll see the transaction, there's the fee at the top, then there's the output. And so that's the amount that we removed at the very start. Then there's our rare sat in the 10,000 sats. And then there's the rest that goes back to the exchange. So hopefully this has made sense. Um, and we'll just get back to the wallet and confirm. So 
ordinals, addresses under my rare one. We can see we've got 10,000 there, so that's all gone there. And what I would do now if I was really concerned is right click on output, freeze UTXO, and that way it can't be spent at all. All right, the other thing I will mention is that if your SAT is in the first 330 SATs, your, the SAT that you're targeting is in the first 330, you do have to pad the input as well. Um, that's something that you'd probably want to jump into a Discord and confirm with some other people about. I, I'm not too familiar about that sort of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not a dev. I'm just someone that likes to learn and try to share what I've learned. Uh, so hopefully today you've learned how to not only find what's in your wallet, but also extract something that's in your Sparrow wallet.